Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Here's the deal. It's hot, it's dry, and it's crunchy. Everything is crunchy. It hasn't rained in probably two weeks. Everybody's just filled with general unhappiness. All right, you belly acres, I'm gonna take care of you. You know what I always do. Look out. You rapscallions. Yes, we're going down that way. You guys know where we're going. We're going right in there. Look out. Look out, Coco. Okay, you can go. Hey, little one, 2304. They are having a chomp fest in here. Well, you got some big mouthfuls. The grass growth is going wonky. It's just not what it should be at all. Normally at this time of year, the beginning of June, it'd still be pretty moist with regular rain and it's just not happening and there isn't much of anything in sight a chance of thunderstorms you know how that goes this day or that what happens when you get a dry spell like this is grass will quickly go to seed like this is and the tips will start to burn out and everything stalls even the clover starting to yellow out this is red clover Alfalfa is still growing good, but that's got deep roots. Now here's the thing. This is the field they just came off of, and there's still a decent amount of forage here. I could have left them on for a couple more days. This is a field they came off of about a week ago, and you see what happens. They have done a good job at clipping off things that were going to seed, but there's not a lot of volume in here. This field I just put them on is five acres. And it's got, you know, a decent amount, but it's nothing compared to what it should be at this time of year. Two things. Number one, remember that pasture video I made a month or so ago, luscious pastures. I said it's time to improvise after you, it's kind of like a football game where you plan out your first plays and then after that, you make the call based on what's happening. We're going to have to improvise grazing so whereas i would usually slow them down because the grass is growing faster they can than they can eat it now i'm going to speed them up because i don't want the grass to be damaged so much it's already stressed by the dry weather so i'm going to be moving them on these fields at probably three or four days on this one at the most and then down for a couple days down for a couple days and back and forth so they're not taking too much the other thing is that you may ask, well, you just cut 11 acres of hay. Why did you do that? You could have saved it for pasture. And the reason is because on those fields where you have grass that's gotten over mature, you're better off haying them and taking all that material off because the cattle will be really selective about how they graze it and a lot of it will go to waste. Different than when that material is all bound together in a hay bale, they'll more indiscriminately chomp it down. You guys head down there. There's a lot of good stuff to find in this field still. We're early in the summer yet, so it's hard to tell if this is a trend. I don't really feel like there's a trend for the summer till you get toward the end of June. But I'm nervous about it enough to hedge my bets, especially considering there may not be a second cutting. Over the past week, I've put a total of 93 bales in the barn, 25 of our own 5x5s, the big monsters, and then 68 of the 4x4s from my neighbors, which volume-wise are about half the volume of a 5x5. And altogether, that's 118 days worth of food for the cattle. Plus, I've got about 30 bales from last year and the year before last stacked along this wall. If this spring were behaving normally, I'd say I'm in good shape because there's a second and maybe a third cutting most years. I'm not taking a risk. 
not taking a risk. I may be feeding hay in a couple weeks if the rain doesn't come. This brings up the term carrying capacity. The, what's the carrying capacity of your land? How many cattle can you graze and make hay off of your land in a normal year? You don't design or build your farm for the extreme years. You build it for a normal year and then you make contingencies for when you have extreme years. So on a normal year, we're grazing cattle all summer long and we're going in to feed hay in November or December. If I planned for an extreme year like this, instead of 30 or 35 head, I'd probably be carrying 10 head. Now that's not realistic. You have to design according to the averages and not the worst case scenarios. It's just like irrigation. We don't have irrigation around here. It's quite uncommon in this part of the state. There's some out west because it would never pay for itself. You need it so so little that it just doesn't make sense. Our rainfall is frequent enough in the summer to keep things growing most years. You got to look at payback. Plus to put an inch of water on an acre, what is it? 10,000 gallons of water. It's not practical without a lot of infrastructure costs. But I have another option. I bought all of the first cutting hay that one neighbor had. But I have more than one neighbor. Hey Dale, is it, I hook up the wagon, come over, is this a good time for you? We're all hooked up and ready to go. We are going up one road, right here. Here's some of it, still in the field. Remember up one road, and then over one road. It's about two miles from my place to this place. Here we are. This used to be a dairy farm. This is my neighbor, Dale Rankin. I'd like to introduce you. And Dale, you have anything to say? No, I guess not. <laughs> he's a man of few words, but he's got a lot of hay. We're going down here to this field, and we're going to pick the hay right out of the field. It's easier than moving it twice for him, and I don't mind coming into the field with the truck. That sure is a pretty sight, round bales in a clean field, forest, and sky. A moving grab. These bales are four foot that way, and about four and a half foot this way, which is about a day and a half's worth of feed for our herd. Nice, just baled a couple days ago. That's a load, 11 bales. Off we go, Dale's gonna gather up bales in this field so they're quicker to load while I unload this load. And load, and load, that load, and load. Hmm. I bought bales from Dale last year toward the end of the season and we were talking here after he loaded and density of the bales is different because just like me with the hay that you saw the stuff dried so fast when we were pretty much I mean bucks too. the other folks that I buy hay from they were baling it so dry you can't get the bales it's not as easy to get the bales as dense and you get a lot of chaff out of the chamber when you wrap the bale and that's why the bales are probably lighter but have just as much material in them because the moisture content is lower.
Dale's ready for me this time. Feel like I'm coming in for a landing. For most of my life, we've dealt with small square bales. Always growing up when I was a kid on the farm, we baled small square bales. Hillary and I started out baling small square bales, going up to 3,500 bales in the final year that we did it. It was a lot of work. So here's some math for you. Dale says that each of these bales probably weighs around 600 pounds. He didn't weigh any of these, and these are a little lighter than what he usually makes. He said usually he makes 650 to 700 pound bales. These are very dry, so say 600, 44 bales is what I'm getting today, and that equals 26,400 pounds of hay, or about 13 tons. Time to get load number three. Now, if you put that in square bale terms, say an average square bale weighs about 40 pounds. That's the equivalent of 660 square bales. So, if I go back to my childhood and think about, or even when Hillary and I started farming, 660 square bales was about six wagon loads if they were thrown off a kicker onto the wagon. You could stack them tighter if you were picking them up off the ground and hand stacking them, but of course that's a lot more work than just taking them off the bale kicker or the bale thrower. Anyway, six loads of hay would break a sweat for Hillary and I. We'd be at it yeah, for the afternoon, but we would be exhausted. Now, look at how we do it. Two guys, two tractors, not breaking a sweat. It's close to 90 degrees out today. Do it in three hours. Amazing. Amazing how much work we can save these days. That is a lot of hay. Just so you get an idea, because I know it's hard seeing it through the camera, this wall is 40 foot long and this width is 50 feet. So I've almost filled that whole area except for this little corner because I got this junk in here that I need to move. There just was no time to do it. I've never had this much hay in the barn at the beginning of June. Not even close. 
by my count, I've got 30 from last year, 25 of mine that was just bailed, 68 bought from one neighbor, and 44 from another neighbor, which winds up being, I don't know, you can do the math. I did the, the number of days feeding though, based on the size of the bale and what I know our herds eat eats and I have 244 days worth of food in here give or take a day or a couple hours that's my guess anyway three quarters of a year I've run out before and I have bad memories of that and I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be a dry summer and the time to buy hay when you know or you think that a dry period is coming is at the beginning of it not during it because the price of hay skyrocket so i'm glad i got what i need if i'm wrong i'm happy that i'm wrong and i still you know you can never have too much hay in the barn we'll feed it out we'll just have to buy less next year if that's the case we're prepared and that's a good feeling going to bed at night i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you next time